Hello. All right, let's jump up ahead. Karula seems to have stopped again. Now, Michael, good morning to you from a very nice day here in South Africa. And you've just asked us, <laughs> Sean Keel is chasing after mom. How much do these leopards weigh in comparison to Karula? Well, I reckon Hosanna probably weighs a little bit more than her now. He's a lot stockier than her. Uh, she's slightly taller. And then, so I, I don't know, Karuna's this little leopard. I mean, it's hard to say, but I reckon she's probably not more than about 40 kilograms. I think that's absolute max, but between 30 and 40 kilograms. So I think Hosanna's probably around 35, maybe almost 40 kilograms. Shongile's very little. Oh, there's another Nyala giving an alarm call. lots of them here but she wasn't showing too much interest in them we just have to wait for the cubs to go past before we can squeeze in so i reckon that shongile probably weighs about 20 kilograms so about 45 pounds somewhere around there but she's very small they look more excited than mom does Now, I just saw a kudu run as well, so I think there's kudu and Nyala around here. The Nyala are now dashing away. Let's, let's move up, let's keep up ahead with them. They're all running. That big Nyala bull, though, is, is still here. He's hanging, he's just around the corner. And then there was kudu, there was kudu running, and there were some Nyala females bolting off to the right of us. But everybody knows that she's here now. Wait, I'm gonna do a little bit of a two-pointer. We will just quickly, I'll scrape through this tree. Where did you guys go? There you are. Are you having a drink? Oh, lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Sorry, as you've seen, that there's, as we're off-roading, I'm moving over all sorts of different types of terrain, so you may see Brian every now and then just re-leveling the camera. But here we have these two naughties having a quick drink. Mom had already had a drink earlier. I wonder where they're going to go. I don't know if they've eaten something last night. They don't, I mean, they don't look particularly thin. They still look in good condition. And these big cats, they don't have to eat every single day. Though if they could, they prefer to. But she could just be moving them. And I think if the opportunity comes around where something is small enough for, for Karula to catch, she will try and catch it. But also, as they're walking through this long grass, they could easily flush out sort of the ground-dwelling birds, so the Franklins and the Spurfowls, as well as a scrub hare or a squirrel, a squirrel or a mongoose. And then you can imagine Hosanna and Shongile will be thrilled with that, and they will probably go chasing after anything that moves. And up he goes. We might get a view of them if we go on this side of the termite mound. Let's give it a go. I'd prefer to keep... He's Mark. Oh, so beautiful. He's trying to... Now, you might see every now and then up. We do apologize for this. The gremlins are out in full force. They're attacking Wendy and only Wendy. Now you might be able to see little heads popping up every now and then. And I think that's Karula. And I think she came around to actually check this termite mound because there's a big hole in it. So at some point an aardvark, an uh, anteater must have gone in there and then I'm sure warthogs would have utilized it. So that's what the leopards love to do is as they go strolling through some of these areas they will poke their heads into that hole that you can see on the left. And if there's a warthog inside there, or anything sleeping inside there, they probably would be quite excited by it, and might even try and pull it out. But isn't this light gorgeous, and especially also with those dew drops that are forming on all of the grasses and the various plants. Now children, come back around this side and play over here so we can watch you. We'll hang tight here, we won't, we won't change our spot because they've already come from the right hand side where Karula's looking now. So I don't know if she'll go back there. I'm sure she'll carry on going east or south. But have a little, little listen. So turn your volume up 
and listen to all the birds that have just started calling. Isn't that gorgeous? Ooh. Now, of course, those birds are not alarming for the leopards. They're just giving their morning call. And Karula's now decided to sit up on top of the termite mound where she's got a very, very good view of her surrounding. And Michelle, you've wondered if leopards and lions will only hunt when they're hungry. Um, like I was saying earlier, uh, Michelle, you know, if these cats could catch something every single day, they would quite happily go into a food coma 24-7, then they'd be thrilled by that. But the problem is, is that these cats are not very successful when it comes to capturing their prey. So <clears throat> it takes them quite a few chances before they get lucky. So even though they might not be hungry, they could potentially still be sitting, listening, waiting for something to come close by. So even when they are having a snooze, which the big cats love to do during the heat of the day, they've still got one eye open and they're still listening around them. Because if a, a, a group of warthogs were to stumble across some sleeping leopards, or the same thing goes with lions, with any of the prey species, they'll jump up and they will make an attempt to catch it, regardless of how full they are because that means if they catch something, then they might not have to worry about catching something again in a couple of days' time. It also depends on the size of the prey that they have. So if it's lions on maybe a big buffalo kill, and there's not many lions feasting on the buffalo, they, they, they might leave it alone. But I have seen it where lions have got up and attempted to make uh, another attempt at a, another buffalo that's come to investigate. And <clears throat> they weren't successful. The buffalo ended up getting away, but they did try to catch it. And the leopards would do the same thing with just smaller prey. And it's a tough job for Karula at the moment. She really has her hands full, or her paws full. She's got two very hungry bellies, and then plus hers, which makes a third. And Hosanna eats probably the same amount that Karula and Shongile eat in one go. That's what he would eat. He's a greedy guts. So she needs to keep in mind that if she catches small things like Dacre and Steenbok or a scrub hare or a dwarf mongoose, it's not going to last long at all. So she needs to try and catch something like a big impala ram that they can feed on for a day and a half and then move on from there. But Shongila and Hosanna have already started catching their own, their own meals too. We saw yesterday morning, well no, not yesterday morning, yesterday afternoon I think it was where Shung, when did Shungile have a scrub hair? These days go by mm -hmm. so quickly here, but in the last 24 hours Shungile <laughs> caught a scrub hair and she ate it. And Hosanna, I don't think he's as gifted as his sister when it comes to catching things, but I'm sure he's caught the odd squirrel. He, well, I suppose he's, her, he's the renowned terrapin and frog catcher, not as tasty as the meals that his sister's catching, but I suppose you've got to get, you, you can't be too greedy out here in nature, you've got to take what you can get.